Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we shall introduce the concept of activity-based costing and work through an example to show you how the results may differ from traditional costing methods. The traditional costing methods are based on the allocation of fixed overhead using particular measures of production. They include direct labour hours, direct labour cost and machine hours. The point about this form of measurement is that it is relating allocation to production volume. If production goes up 20% then the overhead would go up by 20%. Accountants looking at costing were asking the question Should production volume always be the allocation base? If we consider the assumption that if output increases then overhead increases by the same percentage, then what is being overlooked? For one business it may be setups. If machinery has to be set up before a production run, then the number of setups can be significant. Suppose that product A requires five setups and product B requires only two setups, and that setup is the most expensive part of overhead. Allocation based on direct labour may miss this completely. Very often electronic products require testing. The test may be a part of an inspection process. Will all the products require the same number of inspections? If product A requires 12 purchase orders to obtain components and product B requires 45 purchase orders then this too could be significant. What often happens is that high volume products end up with carrying a larger proportion of the overhead. Activity based costing is designed to prevent that happening. The first step is to identify activities. A series of products may all make use of a plastic moulding machine. Each mould is an activity. The moulding machine would become the cost pool, so activities are put into cost pools. The cost drivers for the cost pool are obtained. This means we select the most appropriate allocation base for the cost pool. For the moulding machine it might be the time required for setup so setup could be the driver. Using the cost drivers for allocation the costs can now be directly linked to the products that are being produced. Now let us work through an example. The company Fut Fut Motors produces motorcycles and we will look at allocation of costs to two models. One is a small moped produced in large quantities the other a luxury bike produced in much smaller quantities. The managers have been looking at their figures and they see that the luxury motorcycle, the big beast, seems to be far more profitable. They believe it would be a great idea to cut some production from the moped and produce increased volume of the big beast. The chief accountant is not convinced there is good information available to take such a decision and so asks for a more detailed study comparing the cost of production of the two models by allocation according to activity-based costing. The information that had been presented to the chief accountant had determined allocation of fixed overhead using direct hours as the allocation base. A total overhead of four million dollars was allocated using two million direct labor hours to give a rate of two dollars per hour for allocation. This rate was applied to the two models. The totter along moped, a leading seller, required 40 direct labor hours and so each moped was allocated a unit cost of eighty dollars fixed overhead. The big beast required 35 hours and was allocated fixed overhead to give a unit cost of seventy dollars. The remainder of the information was already available with unit costs for direct labour at $12 per hour and costs for direct materials known. This gave a unit cost of $960 for the totter long moped and a unit cost of $1,490 for the Big Beast luxury bike. 
Profit was determined using the traditional costing method for allocation of fixed overhead. The last trading period showed that 12,000 mopeds had been sold, but only 42 of the luxury bike. Sales revenue is recorded. The direct labour, materials and overhead are now entered using the information on unit costs and the number of units sold. With this information we can add the costs for direct labour, materials and overhead to determine cost of sales. Then subtract this figure from sales revenue to give the gross profit for each of the models. The figures indicate a gross profit of $6.48 million for the moped and $1.26 million for the luxury bike. Given the cost per unit and selling price, we can determine the gross profit per unit. For the moped, each unit sold yields $540 as profit, and for the luxury bike, each unit sold yields $3,010 as profit. Determining profit as a percentage of sales and the totter along has a return of 36% and the luxury bike a return of 67%. It would appear from these figures that increasing the production of the Big Beast luxury bike and decreasing production of the moped is a good idea. But the activity based costing still remains to be completed. The total overhead allocation is divided between setup, machine hours and quality control. You should note that the total of fixed overhead remains the same at $4 million. These areas are the cost pools. The cost driver for each pool is determined. For setup, each individual setup is considered. For machine hours, it will be the number of hours of machine use and for quality control it will be the number of inspections that are made. The number of setups, machine hours and inspections carried out annually are entered. We now have figures that give the cost of each setup as $10,000, whilst each machine hour is allocated at $25 per hour and each inspection is allocated at $50. To carry out the next step, the managers need to know the number of setups for each, the number of machine hours, and the number of inspections. We have entered these into our table. This gives us the overhead allocation using activity based costing. The total overhead for the totter along moped is $948,000 whilst for the luxury big bike the figure is $125,750. How are these going to impact on profit? The sales units and sales revenue will remain the same as before. We are using figures of 12,000 for sales for the moped and 42 for sales of the luxury bike. The figures for direct labour and direct materials also remain unaltered. We now enter the overhead using the activity based costing approach. We have our total overhead allocation of $948,000 for the moped and $125,750 for the luxury bike. The total for cost of sales for each model can now be determined. We now have some interesting figures emerging. We can see that the gross profit when we subtract cost of sales from revenue is $5.544 million for the moped, but the luxury bike, the big beast, is actually making a loss of $122,140. We can also show this by entering selling price per unit and cost price per unit. The cost price of the big beast exceeds the selling price. Each moped is producing $462 of profit, whilst each luxury bike is actually costing the business almost $3,000. Activity-based costing suggests that the reduction of the moped should not be lowered, but that costs associated with the big beast should be reviewed. One factor that might be considered is the very high cost of setups. 
If a setup is required for each run, then perhaps the big beast should only be produced once a year using a single setup. The main benefit of activity based costing is that it can identify whether a product is being over costed or under costed. This, in turn, should lead to better cost control. A disadvantage is that it becomes very unwieldy where a business has many products. A business producing 100 products, with 10 cost pools, has 1000 allocations to make. This ends our podcast on activity based costing, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.